is Circle City, one of the greatest racing towns in the world, Indianapolis, Indiana. Here we go, you hear the revs coming up, clicked into gear, ready to go in Indy. Oh, way over the bars! And here comes Dungy, and then here's that battle, Anderson going after Brayton now. Kennard comes to the inside. The two Honda riders going out of here. Oh, Pike! Oh! Man, hang on! He just couldn't get rid of the throttle, and that thing took off on him. It has been a wild night of racing here in Indianapolis, and we got one more to go. Round 13 for the 450 championship. Just about set to go, Jenny. And Ryan Dungey is chasing win number 29 of his career, and it helps that he won an Indy last year. Last season, Ryan Dungey had six wins. He had eight wins, excuse me, which was really impressive to so many of us. Eight was the most he's ever had in his career. Right now, he has six, which means he's well on track to possibly beating that number eight. I asked Ryan today, how are you better than last year? You were so good last year. He said it all comes down to the numbers, the facts, the way he trains. He told me he's so meticulous in the way he trains with Eldon Baker that every lap time, every calorie intake, every heart rate is monitored during the week. He knows exactly where he's at. He's able to see the progress. All that hard work during the week, that's where the hard work pays off. And Saturday, you just go racing. You know you're in the right place. And that's the confidence Ryan Dungey is racing with tonight. Uh, keys confidence this whole game here is supercross it's all about believing in yourself and having confidence in yourself it takes a lot of hard work to get there Dungey certainly has done that he rides a ktm ktm will bring you spider cam well one of the keys to this race is going to be the first turn area and it you can get to about this area right here, okay? If you're on the inside, you have to stay on the brakes and stay tight right around there to get the whole shot. The other riders that, that come in with a lot of speed and go wide, they just lose positions before you get to that white line, which is uh, if you get there first, you have won the actual whole shot. It has been a very challenging racetrack with the ruts here tonight. This Monster Energy Supercross, Juliana Daniel with the 32nd board. Well, this track claimed one title contender in that 250 main, Jeremy Martin. I believe he cased the triple, he was out. You got Dungey Roxon and Anderson, your top three in this championship. How will it fare? They love their racing here in Indianapolis. Doesn't matter what kind. But they also love Monster Energy Supercross, and we're ready to drop the game. Dungy trying to come around the inside. Porcel sweeping around the outside. Alessi with the whole shot. Dungy flies by into the lead. Looks like Tomac in third there with an aggressive move on Porcel. Alessi sweeping around the second place position and Dungey's trying to check out on the field already. So aggressive with his starts this year and it pays off once again. There's Roxon back behind Tomac. Tomac trying to come after Alessi, takes him high. And Roxon comes by as well. He comes to the inside of Tomac. Wow. Good battle here as the Suzuki rider goes sweeping by and into second place. All three of the RCH riders here tonight making it into the main event. Pretty solid run for them. So aggressive by Ken Roxon on the Suzuki. He knows with Dungey out front with a 42 point lead in the championship that he has to do something. Roxon cannot afford to let Dungey finish in front of him in any race and that's a massive gap and Roxon has to hope for a little help along the way but he's got to chase down Dungey. He's got the speed and the aggressive riding here to do it. And Tomac back in third looks really good also. He sets fourth in points coming into this event. See Dungey sweeping around that flat corner, the end of the straightaway. 
Oxen looks really good through that rhythm lane too. Jason Anderson, one of the heat winners, timing and scoring shows him back in ninth right now. So certainly not, not getting the start here in the main event that he needed. Tomac did, but he's losing a little ground. And here's Porcel in fourth, and then Kennard, Brayton, Alessi, and then Anderson and Baggett together as they come over the line just inside the top 10 with Bogle rounding out those 10 riders. Track really going to start to get chewed up now that we have 22 of the fat. Oh, they come together. Anderson and Baggett bump before the triple. Neither one of them are able to complete the triple. That's going to really allow Bogle and Pike just behind him to close up on him. Four laps through this 20 lap main event, and I can already see the ruts and some of these rhythm sections starting to form. Watch how gnarly the ruts are. Look at this double coming out of this turn right here. Baggett going inside the single. Anderson sweeping to the outside here into this next lane. Baggett's on that four. There's Anderson. And the amount of decisions as we have a battle for the lead. Roxon has caught up to Dungey. Oh, and they get a little bit together. Dungey not willing to give up easy here tonight in Indianapolis. Dungy. Now, how aggressive is Roxon going to be? Huge ruts through this section here. Dungey fighting for that line on the outside of the whoops and cuts over on Roxon, boxes him out. But last week, these riders were so close in Santa Clara, but it was the type of track that if you if you try too hard, you can easily make a mistake. Tonight, the more fit you are, the stronger, the more mentally tough you are, the faster you can go. Rocks in with three wins this year. Phoenix, Dallas, and Toronto. Dungey, as you heard earlier, with six. Roxon's going to have to gather it back up here and set up another attack. Looking at the lap times, Ryan Dungey's best is a 44 flat. Roxon's best is half a second quicker. So Roxon has the advantage in speed right now. They get around Nick Schmidt. Schmidt was running in 18th as they are starting to work through lap traffic. Here's a battle back behind them. You see Brayton in here. He's in eighth. Michael Lessie on the 800 and Baggett just in front of them. Here's Roxon again. And the crowd cheering their approval as the fight for the win in Indianapolis is underway once again. Now, what will Roxon do differently? Inside. Dungey tries to take the line away. Back inside. Roxon is giving Dungey everything he can handle here tonight. And oh. once again, the Red Bull KTM rider pulls away from the Suzuki mounted Roxon. And look how much time Dungey gains through that rhythm section because Roxon made a mistake in the middle of it. Right there, Roxon has shown that he has the speed to catch Dungey. On a track like tonight, the AMA officials will be very, very aggressive with the blue lapper flags. But in these sections where the track's a little one line and, they, and the riders don't want to get out of that main line, that's uh, potentially a situation where Dungy, the leader, could lose time by getting held up by a lapped rider. Porcel and Kennard battling over fourth. And the factory Honda rider takes the position for now. Bernard up to fourth. He's about 14 seconds behind the leader. Porcel's career best finish in the 450s and eighth. Did that at Dallas and Daytona. Ralph, we're not even halfway through this 20 lap main event, and you can already see the best Supercross riders in the world being challenged by this track here tonight and this soft Indiana soil. It is going to be very physically demanding, Jeff, by the time we get to the end of this one. Well, the lap times are certainly going to drop off. Last time around, Dungy was a 45-4, Roxon quicker, but the lead 
two seconds as Kennard up into fourth right now setting his sights on the Kawasaki rider Eli Tomac. Tomac bottom of your screen over the triple there's Kennard bottom of your screen heading into the triple. It looks like Anderson Porcel behind him Anderson who was ninth off the start now up to six starting to close up. On Kennard and Purcell. There he is, the 21 of Jason Anderson, who has been so fast here tonight. Good battle here between a couple of Husqvarna riders. See, Porcell see and Sam Anderson. Them. Anderson on the 21, getting through that section, and he's right on Porcell. Here he comes. He'll have the inside advantage here. And it works. And that's what I was talking about through that whoop section. Everyone trying to fight their way to the left hand side. Clayson, the 761, was getting lapped. And Porcel and Anderson both wanted that line. Back to the front we go. Dungey continuing to lead. And you can see Roxon has closed that two second gap down. He had lowered it to one and just under one and a half seconds. How about now as they come to the finish line jump? Oh, he lost a little bit. Roxon but he's there. His way past. Look at Carlos Rivera, Dungey's mechanic, pointing backwards. That's the lap riders that come by. You know, you're not going to pressure Dungey. That's for sure. Calm, cool, extremely confident in his bike, his skills. Roxon's going to have to try to find a way to push past as they go by Brock Tickle. You know what Rivera, Carlos Rivera was pointing at? He was telling Dungey that Roxon is still right there. The intensity builds for the lead as the intensity for fourth place here starts to build as Anderson. Anderson right oh. to the inside. Gets around Kennard. Into the rhythm lane they go. As we watch oh. Dungey on the far right and Kennard's not done here as well. He comes back through a little bit different line through there. Look on the right hand side of your screen Ralph Roxon has once again caught Ryan Dungey for the lead. This will be the third time he's reeled him in. Tomac has problems on the three. He comes off the bike and Anderson and Kennard go past. Oh trouble for Dungey as he tries to get through the lapper. That's Freezy in front of him just not getting out of the way. You saw the blue flag waving. Once again, that's that whoop Whoa. section, Ralph. Freezy was in the good line. Dungey got held up. And more lap riders in front of him as Barsha Schmidt goes by. Boy, Freezy almost got in the way of Roxon as well. There's Barsha now in front of Dungey. And Roxon is right on him here now. Let's see how Barsha plays this. Gonna hold him up just a tad bit. He gets way off to the inside, allows him through. Roxon's going to have a shot at him. There's no doubt he's going to close in and get another opportunity to make a pass. Might be his final shot. Closing down on the 14th lap. Roxon's got a really hot line just before the finish line on that Dragon's back. He's taking off from the second to last whoop on the top there, carrying a lot of speed coming into the finish line. See how Bogle gets out of the throttle, moves to the inside. You knew the leaders were coming through, reading those blue flags. Getting by Bogle means they're already lapping up into the top ten. And how about These two at the front putting on a furious pace here tonight. And how about Dungey stretching the lead back out? This is where all the strength training, all the cardiovascular training, this is where it all comes into play because tonight you have to muscle the bike around if you're going to complete all these rhythm sections. Paddle for eighth and Reed gets by Brayton. He'll claim the position on his Yamaha number 22. Don't forget next week live at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time daytime racing in the Edward Jones Dome on Fox from St. Louis. Going to be a great day with Monster Energy Supercross on Fox live for the first of two live races on Fox in 2016. Now Reed closing in on Eli Tomac who ran third most of the race went down. This is the battle for seventh and eighth and this is a fight for position two here. 
This is Porcel and Baggett. Porcel just in front of him in fifth. Oh, he has a problem and Baggett goes by. Yoshimura Suzuki, number four, moving up a spot into the top five. And the leader, there's Dungey. Here comes Ken Roxon. Takes him wide, but not wide enough. Five laps remaining here in Indianapolis. Roxon's gonna have probably one more shot at the champ. He's gonna have to pick the right spot at the right time, and how aggressive will he make it? They are one and two in the championship standings. Roxon has got to beat him to the line if he wants any shot at this title this year. Dungey just so mentally tough, so strong, just hitting his lines perfectly. It's a difficult spot to be in, working your way through the lapped riders when you're the leader. Roxon has the advantage. Oh, and Dungey misses the triple. And here comes Roxon. Into the lead. Will he have the checkers first? Can Dungey mount an attack now? The Red Bull KTM rider will begin his hunt of the 94 Suzuki of Ken Roxon. Now Dungey will have the advantage here of being able to see where Ken Roxon was making that time, possibly follow his lines. Oh, and Roxon makes a mistake. And there goes Dungey. So this racetrack starting to really play a part. So Dungey back with the lead and Roxon has to regroup and make a run at it with two and a half laps to go. Is it enough time for Roxon on the Soaring Eagle Jimmy John Suzuki factory racing number 94 to close in one more time? By Brayton now, that's eighth place, Dungey and Roxon, just an incredible pace here tonight on a very difficult racetrack. Dungey has to get out of the main line and oh. the looks and look at Roxon, he closes right back up. He's there. Two laps to go, and they're gonna do it one more time. This will be the fourth time. Fifth, if you count the time, that Dungey went after Roxon, and Carlos Rivera encourages his rider. Oh, look at the crowd on their feet here tonight. Up and over that triple. Right on him. What an incredible ride these two champions have put on here tonight. So mentally uh, demanding. As you, oh, look at Dungey comes up a little bit short right there. The track, as treacherous as it's been all day long, one to go. We said it would be about the rider that makes the least amount of mistakes. Will one of them make a mistake here? White flag, one to go. Pass Porcel, who's running in seven. Dungey, Roxon, the battle is on an Indy. The crowd on their feet. Roxon giving him everything he can handle. Running the same line through that corner. Dungey with the advantage. Drag racing across the stadium floor. Through the big flat sweeper. Into the rhythm section on the opposite end of the stadium. And Roxon loses a little bit of ground to Dungey now. Into the whoops for the final time. The reigning champ, the points leader, shuts them all down again. Dungey with the win in Indy. Wow, what a hard fought battle between Ryan Dungey and Ken Roxon. They shake hands. That was a very, very difficult main event. And Ryan Dungey, for the 29th time in his career, comes out on top. That was the most difficult win of the year for Dungey. And here comes third place. 26. After all of that, it's Ken, it's Anderson that takes third place. 30 seconds behind Anderson with a bad start. Ninth on lap one, comes up for third. Outstanding ride. And Dungey, wow. That was a statement race. Points wise, Dungey's got a lot of points over Roxon. He doesn't need the win. 
except for himself. He wants to prove to everybody that he is the best guy, and he has done it again here tonight. Well, the thing I'll take away from it, it was another style of victory, right? This one, he didn't have to, he didn't just walk away from it. He had to work extremely hard to get it, and he did it. 29th of his career, 29th straight podium. Dungey, 31st straight top five, 42nd straight top 10. We'll hear from him when we return. Well, there he is, Ryan Dungey, winning another one here in Indianapolis, and the stats are just beginning to become amazing for this young man. Look at that, 29 consecutive on the podiums, 85 in his career, 101 top five finishes, already two championships, well on his way to his third, and you just wonder where all of these numbers are gonna be when he is all said and done. He is standing by with Jim. Ralph, you are right about that. The numbers continue to add up, but tonight was not easy. You put together everything you went through. You had to fight through the ruts. There were the lappers. There were a few mistakes made, and Ken Roxon was really giving you a battle. Was this the most mentally challenging race you've had all year? No, I think it was. You know, I mean, f first off, that battle, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, and it's good to be able to work hard and fight to the end, and it's a, it's a rewarding finish, but, you know, tonight it wasn't just the pressure that was tough. It was also the ruts that we were dealing with, too, and you can see we both made mistakes, you know, and when you're out front, there's a little more pressure than normal, and uh, it's what it is, you know, but we do our best to handle it, And uh, but I got to give it up. You know, obviously a track like this really shows the bike and, and, and obviously how uh, how much hard work the guys are putting into it. You know, this track ain't difficult. It's very difficult. It's tough. So I got a big, big thanks to all the Team Red Bull KTM guys, all WP Suspension, everybody who made this happen, and it's uh, these wins are awesome, and this one, it, when it happens like this, is even sweeter. And uh, we put a lot of hard work in, you know, so it's really rewarding. But uh, Alden Baker, my trainer, his family, my, my, my wife, Lindsay, has been supportive. And uh, I mean, everybody, this, these wins are very important and special, and we all get to celebrate them together. So I couldn't do without them. So I'm uh, very thankful. And uh, tonight was a uh, tough track. The, rut, the ruts were very challenging. So I think we'd all agree on that. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Congrats, guys. As you take a look at the results, and uh, the riders that finished behind him, you know, I talked with Ryan earlier today in, in his mechanic, Carlos, about not just keeping Ryan focused and moving forward, but the whole team. You got to remember, you got to keep that whole organization fired up. It's a tough challenge, yeah. and they're doing a great job of it. Yeah, and that Red Bull KTM team, they just have their head down. They're thinking as far ahead as the next week, and they keep clicking off the wins, and that's exactly what they should be doing. Let's hear from Ken Rocks and Jenny. Ken Roxon back-to-back second place finishes these last two weeks, but what we saw tonight, you've proven that your speed is there and you really gave Ryan a run for his money throughout the entire night. Is it more encouraging to know that the speed is there or frustrating that you weren't able to pass for that final lap? Well, first off, we've been, I've been making quite a few changes to the bike and I made another change this week that, that worked great. You know, I have a lot more confidence, a lot more faith in the bike, so that is a big thing. Um, other than that, tonight was, uh, was an awesome race. We kept it, uh, fun the whole ride um, ultimately I wish uh, the race would have kept going going maybe for another five laps but uh, I made that mistake and and let him back by but you know I fought the whole way um, the track was really technical out there but Sony Eagle Jimmy Johns factory Suzuki team has uh, has been working absolutely amazing tonight it was a really technical track and um, yeah we'll be back next weekend but I'm happy with how I rode and uh, yeah overall happy though All right, and thanks guys here's a look at the point and uh, look at that Dungey has more wins by himself than the rest of the field combined. Yeah, the number I like on that screen, if I'm Ryan Dungey, is that 45 points over Ken Roxon. Anderson battled back to finish third, Jenny. He definitely battled, Ralph. I think you were as far as ninth when you started out in that first lap. You fought your way to third. I know you're still focusing on getting those starts down, yeah. but as for your speed, do you leave satisfied in the way you raced? Yeah, you know, I mean, I want to do better. You know, being on the podium is cool, but once you do it a certain amount of times, you want to be on that top step. So, uh, yeah, I definitely want to, uh, you know, be better and be battling with these guys. And, and even if I got third, I'd feel way better about my ride if I was, like, up there battling with them. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, this, is a, this was a tough race. And just to come out and, and have a podium, I'm, I'm very excited and uh, really pumped on my whole Rockstar Energy Racing Husqvarna team. You know, they've done a really good job. And we got a whole crew behind us, and we're just going to keep working until we, uh, you know, hopefully we're battling. and. You know, we're all, it, it's a good group up here, but at the same time, I want to beat both of them. All right. 
So we we're going to try my, try my best. All right. We'll see you up there soon. Thanks, Jason. Guys. Next Saturday, Monster Energy Supercross is on Fox for the first time this year as the best riders in the world push the limit to be the one that takes a checkered flag in St. Louis. It all begins at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox affiliate or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Back down to Jenny. Well, Trey, when we spoke earlier today, you said you weren't going to be worried about the way you rode earlier. You wanted to be careful with the way you ride, with the way you performed. Are you happy with the way you raced? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm happy to be uh, the best finish of my year, but still disappointed not to be on the podium. But, you know, all the guys at uh, Honda HRC did a great job, and uh, we made good adjustments, and we made it through this track. It was a really tough track, so got to give all the glory to the Lord and uh, just keep plugging away. Hopefully you guys will see me up there before the end of the year. All right, thanks, Trey. And Blake, for you, you said today you made complete changes to the bike. So how special is it to have your best finish of the year? Oh, we're just improving. You know, the whole team is behind me 100%. I got to give it up to the whole team. We're just getting better and better each weekend. I just feel like I'm starting to come around late coming into the season, but super happy. Just got to give it up. Big thanks to the whole Yoshimura Factory Suzuki Racing team. All my sponsors, Just One, O'Neill Gear, Scott Goggles, SoCal Super Truck, CD Boots, just everybody for helping me out. And, uh, we're working in the right direction. This is where we need to be, and we'll just work forward from here and try to end up here more often. All right, Blake, thanks, guys. Well, for Jenny Taft and Jeff Emig, I'm Ralph Shaheen. That'll wrap up our coverage from here. The Circle City, Indianapolis, just a fantastic race on a ruddy racetrack. Huge show next week. Don't forget to join us live, 2.30 on Fox from St. Louis. Congratulations to our winner here, Ryan Dungey.